Yo, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really well, having a great week. This video, we're gonna talk about talking. Obviously, this is not just any kind of talking. This is having a technical conversation with someone. Talking tech, tech lingo, talking nerdy, whatever you wanna call it. But when you're in a conversation with another engineer or another developer, you wanna be on the same wavelength. And that starts with having a good conversation and using the right words at the right time. Probably when you're first starting out or you're really beginner, it's tough to follow a lot of the words that are being thrown around when you're talking with someone. You don't know what a lot of them mean. You don't have the right context of what's going on. And it's really intimidating because you don't wanna sound dumb. You wanna sound competent, all that stuff. But it's actually pretty difficult. And one of the reasons why I think it's so difficult is because the same exact words, one word, can have a technical meaning that's very different across different contexts. And that's what we're gonna talk about. First, let's just define what this context means. So when you're having a conversation with someone, they could be jumping in and out of different contexts. First, they're talking about the operating system. Oh, then they're talking about the language. And then they're talking about some third-party frameworks and then about networks and then about your own code. But whatever it is, people often jump around. You often do this too, but the moment you jump from context to context, let's talk about Java. Oh, let's talk about Linux now. But that's when things get really difficult to follow because every single word, as I just stated, it could mean different things across contexts. So one of the main things that I think a lot of people don't talk about is that the first way to just ground yourself in any conversation is you have to be following the context at any point in time. You can't just have a dictionary of definitions in your head and being able to recite them. You have to know what special words mean as they're used in special places. That just comes with practice, of course, but that's something a lot of people don't actually talk about. You just have to be aware of the context of the conversation. And if you're really a beginner, it's a little bit jarring. So why is all of this important? Well, two reasons. One is easy. You just wanna be able to understand and be on the same wavelength as other people around you. But the second reason, which I think is more important, is that all of this, the core of it is to help you communicate better. All of this stuff of choosing the right context, choosing the right word, knowing kind of your frame, all of this is to actually help you be able to communicate your thoughts better. And when you're in the technical field, programming, that's really, really important. Not just talking with other developers, but talking with all sorts of people. You have to communicate your thoughts to every single non-technical department as well as technical people. And that's when all these skills become really useful. So what we're gonna do in this video is that there's a ton of context out there. I just took five, five examples that we're gonna blow through, talk about, but there's a lot of different contexts and you'll just get more use to them as you become more technical. But we're gonna talk about five and let's just get straight into it. So I have five different contexts and the way it's gonna work is gonna kind of start from the bottom and go slowly, slowly, slowly to the top. So the first one, I'm gonna start at the bottom, but this is what I'm calling the system context. Think of the system as anything below the programming language you're using. So this is Linux, the operating system. This is the big distributed network. But for most of us, I'm assuming most of the people watching, like for me, applications, software development, and we're using a language, right? We use a language and then there's a bucket of stuff under the language. I'm gonna call that bucket the system. The nice thing about the system all this huge pile of stuff below our languages is that most of the words are very well defined. If you're talking about Linux, for example, your home directory always means your home directory. If you're talking about networks, latency and bandwidth have well defined meanings. But in that context, the system, like inside Linux or inside the operating system, all those words mean very specific things and that's a little easier. So that bottom level is the first level easiest. Now, if we go to the second level, let's go one level up, and now we're gonna talk about programming languages, right? You know, most frequently asked question is, what programming languages should I learn? Tons of programming languages. I think the number one most popular one, according to Stack Overflow, is JavaScript now, but even words have different meanings across languages, which is why you have to start getting being careful at this area. So, just for example, the word module, Right, very general word, module. What does that even mean? But module means one thing 
in Ruby. It means one thing in Python. It can mean another thing in JavaScript, but just that one word, it can mean very different things across programming languages. And if you just take your Python definition of module and you apply it to Ruby or JavaScript, it's not gonna be correct. So this is the first level where you have to start being really careful because words are gonna become overloaded. Okay, so let's just keep blowing through this list. One level above programming languages. It's our third level and this is gonna be third party libraries. So as many developers know, we don't really write 100% of things from scratch. If you do, you're probably a crazy Russian programmer, but most of us use other people's software to help us, third party libraries. So open source stuff, different frameworks, cool libraries, we all take it into our code. As long as they have good licenses, we take it into our code and we use it all to make our applications work because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There is so much software out there. So very general sounding words like controller, container, worker, processor, whatever you have it, but very general technical programming type of words, they're often reused in these third-party libraries. One thing that I found is really helpful when you talk about this yourself is that you can almost namespace or prefix those words when you use them well. So let's say you're using Rails to build your application, right? Rails uses a thing called controllers. They just call things controllers. That's a Rails thing. That's not a Ruby thing. That's not a whatever thing. That's purely part of the framework. But when you're having a conversation with someone, instead of just saying, oh, let's put the code inside the controller, if you wanna be extra, extra clear, you can say, let's put things inside the Rails controller. So it's kind of like real life namespacing. So again, third party applications, you're definitely gonna use them pulling software from around the world, but you're pulling in software that you don't control. You can't really control how they've named something. So when you talk about third-party software, just be extra clear of how they're using the words. Fourth level up above third-party frameworks is just your own software, right? We're at the fourth layer and this is your own application logic and this is pretty much free game, right? You can name anything, whatever you want. You could call something a arbiter orchestration super module and that means gibberish but inside the context of your code it could mean something so at this level when you're working on one application if you're doing it by yourself it's easy right you name things whatever you want to name them and it's really really convenient but the moment you share your application code with the team with your friends when there's a group of people working on their code then you have to actually be careful of how things are named so if one person on the team decides to call this class a super orchestration module, everybody should understand what a super orchestration module means in the context of your own code, right? So this is super subjective, but as you go from job to job, department to department, you're gonna work in very different code bases with very different teams. And each one of those code bases is gonna have a certain set of their own words that mean very special things. So the first thing, the best thing you can do in those situations is that look at that code base and just know what the words mean. All right, we're at the last context now. This is the fifth highest context and I'm just calling this business stuff. So a very, very few minority of people work only with technical people. For the most of us, the majority of us, if we have a job, we wanna start a company or do anything, you have to work with non-technical people or business people, right? So if you have a whole basket of technical words down here, on top of all of that, you still have business words. Business words are crazy acronyms that companies come up with, crazy words of the company or corporate lingo, whatever you want to call it, but these are just totally words special for a company or a project or a business. And these words, even though they're not technical whatsoever, you still have to use them properly. Remember my first point I made in the beginning of this video, but one of the most important things of using the right words at the right time is just that it can effectively promote your own communication. And that's not just communication with other nerdy engineers. You have to be able to communicate well with the business people. So one way to do that is not only do you have to understand the technical words across all the technical contexts, you have to understand the business words in the business context. And it's equally important if you wanna talk with like the business analysts or the accountants or the marketing people, but it's equally important and do not neglect it. All right, guys, those are all the 
context levels I have for today. Of course, there's many, many more, but just the five that I came up with, five very general ones is gonna be system stuff, programming languages, third-party libraries, your own code, and then business stuff. So those are five very general ones, but of course, even across those five, you can imagine how the word module can mean very different things. Okay, so let's just do some closing thoughts about all these different things, but how can you use this information, right? This information is a little abstract. I didn't tell you what a hundred technical words mean. I just told you guys an idea, right? But often what I found personally is that sometimes when I was confused, it's not, it wasn't necessarily that I just didn't understand what the words meant. It's just that I didn't follow the context fast enough as people were switching. This happened to me a lot when I was younger, but when I would overhear people talking, they would be, I thought I would know the words, but they would use them in different ways. I was unsure if I really knew them, but I just got lost in the context. And sometimes instead of asking for, what does that word mean? You can actually just ask for clarity on what's the context of their, what they're talking about. So if I got lost, I'd just be like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Are we talking about uh, the network now? And they'd be like, no, no, we're not talking about that anymore. Now we're talking about uh, the computer. So even just getting clarity on the context could help you understand digest better the other thing the flip side of that one way to just be able to communicate better is that when you get really really comfortable with all this stuff it could be very natural for you to switch 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 context really quickly and if someone else is also very sharp they can follow you but oftentimes you got to talk with people at various levels so one thing that i like to do is that even if you're super advanced just be very, very clear when you're switching context and namespace stuff. So if you're talking about a programming language for 30 minutes, and then you move to talk about maybe like Django framework, just make it really clear you're switching. Just be like, all right, now let's go talk about the framework a little bit. And then once you specifically make that context switch, everyone listening knows that, okay, now everything's in the Django context, but if you're the one doing the communicating, just make it really, really clear when you're switching. All right, everyone, those are my thoughts for today. Just a little video where we talked about talking, but again, the only point I wanna get across is don't try to follow the words themselves too much. Just make sure you're extra clear on what the context is and how the words are used. But this is all, this is all difficult stuff. When you're new, this is really hard, but it gets easier, more seamless to move between contexts as you get more experience, but it's difficult, so don't rush it. But hope you liked the video. Please leave me a comment, leave me a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, take care.